Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths key skill video on changing the subject of a linear formula with brackets. Now previously we said that to make x the subject of a formula means to get x on its own on one side of the equation. So we don't want this stuff around the x. And remember my one strategy here is to undo the last thing done to the subject. I'll explain what that means. So what we do is we think of the story of what's happening to x on the side it appears. So here's the x. What's the story? Well, we're adding a to it. Then that whole thing, that whole bracket is being multiplied by 3. And that gives us b. So what we can do is we can undo the last thing done to that subject. The last thing we did was times by 3. So to get rid of the times by 3, we do the opposite, which is dividing by 3. So if we divide both sides by 3, now, there is another way of doing this, which I'll show you in a second. So dividing by 3 gets rid of that times by 3. And we're just left with x plus a. And then if we divide the b by 3, remember we don't use a divide symbol in algebra. We should write that as b over 3 as a fraction. Fractions are good in algebra. Divide symbols are bad. Um, now, what's the story of what's happening to x? We're going to use this step again, undo the last thing done to the subject. Well, x, we're adding a to it. We want to get rid of that plus a. We do the opposite, which is to subtract a. Remember what we do to one side of the equation, we have to do the same to the other side to balance it. So minusing a, we'll get rid of that plus a, leaving just x. And then it's b over 3, and then minus a. And notice the minus a is outside the fraction, because the b is being divided by 3, and then we're subtracting a. It's not b minus a all over 3, because that would be the wrong order. So that's the final answer. Now, there is a second way of doing this. Uh, and if you have brackets, what you could do is to expand any brackets you have. So let me write that, or expand any brackets first. And then apply this step, as we did before. So if we try that, um, if, I to if I was to expand this, remember to expand a single bracket, we do each thing inside the bracket multiplied by the thing on the front of the bracket. So that 3 gets times by the x, and the 3 gets times by the a. Now the 3 times the x is 3x, and the 3 times the a is 3a, so it's plus 3a. Now let's just think about the story of what's happening to x. It's been multiplied by 3, then we're adding 3a. We undo the last thing, so we subtract 3a from both sides to get rid of the plus 3a. And that gives you 3x on the left, because the minus 3a and the plus 3a cancel. And it's b minus 3a. And then finally, to get rid of that times by 3 on front of the x, we divide both sides by 3, and we get x is equal to b minus 3a all over 3. So sorry, it's a bit squidged. Now you might be wondering, is this the same as that? And the answer is yes. If I was to split this fraction up, so you've got the b minus 3a, each of those things divide by 3, it'd be b over 3 minus 3a over 3, which would be the same as b over 3 minus a. So they're actually the same answer. And you can just choose which of these two methods you think is more comfortable for you. What about the second one? I'm going to use a second approach. I'm going to expand any brackets first. So the b gets multiplied by each of the things inside the bracket. So b times 3x is 3bx. Remember, we put any variables in alphabetical order, b first, then x. And then b times minus c. We'll notice first it's minus, because positive times negative is negative. And then b times c is just bc. So we get that. And then we can do the usual thing, undo the last thing done to the subject. Well, x was times by 3b. Then we subtracted bc to get minus a. The last thing we did was minus bc. So we add bc to both sides. So if we add bc to this, it's minus a plus bc, or we can put the bc first, so it'd be bc minus a, but if you prefer to write minus a plus bc, then that's fine. And the minus bc plus bc, they cancel, leaving just free bx. Now, what was the last thing done to x now? It was x was being multiplied by 3b, so we divide both sides by the 3b. So this whole thing gets put over 3b, so bc minus a all over 3b, and then divide by the 3b gets rid of the 3b, leaving just x. And that's the final answer, because x is on its own on one side of the equation.